This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. We want to comprehend the answers these previous entries found there. We must penetrate to their questions, which in most instances will not be our own questions, and in many instances will not even be explicitly their own questions. For, in the provocative formula of Alfred North Whitehead, When you are criticizing, or one may add interpreting, the philosophy of an epoch, do not chiefly direct your attention to those intellectual positions which its exponents feel it necessary explicitly to defend. There will be some fundamental assumptions which adherents of all the variant systems within the epoch unconsciously presuppose. Such assumptions appear so obvious that people do not know what they are assuming, because no other way of putting things has ever occurred to them. With these assumptions, a certain limited number of types of philosophic systems are possible. During the past two thousand years, few issues, if any, have so persistently brought out these fundamental assumptions of each epoch as has the attempt to come to terms with the meaning of the figure of Jesus of Nazareth. For that very reason, however, the converse of the relation between what Whitehead calls the philosophy of an epoch and its picture of Jesus will also hold true. The way any particular age has depicted Jesus is often a key to the genius of that age. We who seek, whether as professional or as amateur students of history, to understand and appreciate any segment of the past are continually frustrated, not only by the inaccessibility of many of the most revealing monuments of that experience— since only small fragments and not necessarily the most representative ones have come down to us, but also by our lack of a proper antenna for picking up the signals of another time and place. We cannot and we must not trust our own common sense to give us the right translation of the foreign languages of the past, all of whose languages are by definition foreign even when the past speaks in English. A sensitivity to that frustration is the necessary prerequisite, but it may also become the occupational disease of the historian who can end up despairing of the effort and becoming a victim of what has been called the paralysis of analysis. One element of any method for coping with such frustration must be to inquire after instances of continuity within the change and variety and if possible to find issues or themes that document both the change and the continuity at the same time. The point can be illustrated by reference to a field of historical research far removed from the concerns of this book. Without interruption since the days of the Hebrew Bible and of Homer, olive oil has been a major constituent of the diet, the pharmacopoeia, and the trade of the peoples surrounding the Mediterranean Sea so that one of the most distinguished of contemporary social and economic historians, Fernand Brodel, is able to define the Mediterranean geographically as the region that stretches from the northern limit of the olive tree to the northern limit of the palm tree. The first olive tree on the way south marks the beginning of the Mediterranean region and the first compact palm grove the end. But even a comparison of Homer and the Hebrew Bible will show some of the variety in both the literal and the metaphorical use of olive oil. If, therefore, one were to study its history as condiment and cosmetic, culture and commodity, one would probably be able to discover many of the continuities and many of the discontinuities in the past three millennia of the Mediterranean world. Similarly, the history of the images of Jesus illustrates the continuities and the discontinuities of the past two millennia simultaneously. Arthur O. Lovejoy, founder of the History of Ideas as a Distinct Discipline in Modern American Scholarship, used it to illustrate only the discontinuities. The term Christianity, he wrote in The Great Chain of Being, is not the name for any single unit of the type for which the historian of specific ideas looks. For Lovejoy saw the history of Christianity as not such a single unit at all, but rather as 
a series of facts which, taken as a whole, have almost nothing in common except the name, although he was willing to acknowledge as that series of facts obliged.